Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming to this service of Witness to the Resurrection for Marilyn Louise McGreevy Nolan. Now, there's been one change. Um, we could not find a church musician. They were all out of town this weekend. So instead of singing the hymns, Bill Hodge is going to do them solo. So where it says stand up, you don't have to stand up. You can stay seated and just listen. Okay? Listen to these words of comfort from the scriptures. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let us come together in prayer. O oh God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to bear, to hear, than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Show us now your grace, that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound to save the red black feet. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that caused my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious is that grace of thee! The hour I first believed, when we. Shining as the sun, we 
Hear this reading from the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then this reading from the Old Testament. A capable wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceived that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows. For all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking a seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband, too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. And then these words from the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid.
It's kind of small up here. Friends, we have come here today to celebrate the life of, to give thanks to Almighty God for, and to witness to the resurrection of Marilyn Louise McCreevy Nolan, who entered this life October 24th, 1944, and entered into the joy of the Master on April 13th, 2020. How do you begin to describe Marilyn? She was a force of nature. She is a woman in a field dominated by men. You see many of her accomplishments listed here in her obituary, and there are probably a few that got left out. She had to fight for most of those. She was one of four finalists in the search for the coach of the U.S. national team in 1984, and the only woman. They chose a man. When she was at New Mexico State, her team went to the national championship, and the powers that be told her to take it easy. They just wanted something for the women to do. They couldn't afford going to tournaments and championships. So she left for Utah State, where she won a national championship, the first ever in any sport at Utah State. When she retired, she was still the only woman who had won a national championship in volleyball. All the other coaches were men. I don't know if that's still true, but if it is not, then those who have stand on her shoulders. She fought hard for women's sport in the United States all her life. She also fought hard against cancer. In the end, it won, as it usually does. But I'm sure it knew it had been in a fight. Marilyn had great faith. She sprinkled her conversation with Bible references. She taught Sunday school. She was active in the church all her life. Now you may say, she had to be there. You were there. No, she would have been there no matter what. She lived her faith in many ways. She talked to people on the street or in line at the store and invited them to come to church. She went with friends who were not Presbyterians at their churches on occasion. She befriended many of the homeless in Roswell, talked to them when she encountered them, and gave them money. She even paid for a hotel room for one or two of them. Her kind heart was evident also in the fact that she fed all the stray cats in our neighborhood and even went to the mall and fed the cats there. She raised two wonderful boys of whom she was very proud. She was always cheerful and upbeat and made my life easier in so many ways. That is why I chose the scripture for Proverbs. That was Marilyn. And always she lived volleyball. Even as recently as three years ago, she was consulting with the New Mexico Military Institute volleyball coach, giving her the benefit of her wisdom. Now they say that when a preacher begins a statement with, it is said that, that means it probably didn't happen. Nevertheless, it is said that when Sir Winston Churchill was buried, a military bugler played taps. And then as Sir Winston had instructed at the other end of the cathedral, another bugler played Reveille. Sir Winston understood that death is not the end, it is instead a beginning. This life is not all there is. It is only the first step on a glorious and never-ending journey. Sir Winston knew that. As Christians, we know that also. It is one of the central affirmations of our faith. And it is perhaps the one thing which distinguishes us from any other religion. We serve a risen Savior. The founder of our faith is not some prophet who died a thousand years ago. He is not a philosopher who gave us a series of truths about the universe or urged us to seek the, the truth of the universe. And when we die, we are not reborn as a bird or a cow or an insect. Our Lord is the Son of the living God, and indeed is the living God. He came out of the grave and appeared alive to over 500 people who affirmed that fact even in the face of torture and death. He did not urge us to seek the truth of the universe. He is the truth of the universe and its creator. 
And when we die, we are reborn as whole, redeemed, forgiven children of the living God, living forever in God's presence and praising God forever, along with all the other saints. Despite this knowledge, we think of funerals as a time to mourn. And mourning for our loss is appropriate. We will not see Marilyn again in this life. And we will all miss her. But a Christian funeral should also be a time of celebration. A celebration of the life of Marilyn and a celebration of her homecoming. The Irish have a wonderful tradition called the wake. It's a joyous party celebrating the passage of the deceased from this veil of tears to the glorious life everlasting in God's presence. From a Christian point of view, that's an appropriate response. Although we will miss Marilyn, we should take comfort in and rejoice in the fact that she is in the glorious presence of our Lord and Savior, that she has run her race and laid her burdens down and has received a glorious resurrection body, free of disease and pain and suffering. Her back no longer hurts. There are no more bed sores and no more feeding tubes. As we say for farewell to Marilyn, we know that the Savior has met her and said to her, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. If you ever wondered where you would be better together, you have to be by these senses traveling direction for him. Shall we gather at the river where I do see the cross with this crystal sky forever flowing by the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that move by the throne of God. Oh, the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray. We will walk in worship heaven all the happy golden days. Yes, we'll gather up the river, beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will speed. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Thank you. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant, Marilyn, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you that our sister is fat death, for our sister death is past and pain ended, and that before and that she has now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God in Jesus Christ, you promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails to trust your love which never fails. 
lift heavy sorrow, and give us good hope in Jesus so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. And you don't have to stand for this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. At this time, anybody who would like to come up here and share their memories of Maryland, you're invited to do so. Anybody? Okay, here we go. Yeah, come the microphone. So they, well, uh, yeah, can you try and you, you use that microphone over there? I probably am good without it. Oh, okay. I was a coach as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Redis. I grew up in Fort Davis, small town West Texas girl. My parents were graduates of Paul Ross. Uh, maybe a little bit ahead of, well, actually quite ahead of Maryland. I was um, about 20 years behind her, and I was an all-state athlete. I've been highly decorated in many things, and I went on to play college volleyball. I thought in my heart, you know, at that age, we're just picking, I don't want to go here there. I went and played for Old Roberts University, and my coach had been a teammate of Maryland's at so long. And I never played for Maryland. I coached against her, but I think I was able to see her profound creative thought through my coach. And I say that because my coach always highly honored Maryland and all that Maryland had done to pioneer and develop. So I'm going to share just a couple of things and you may chuckle. But this, from my understanding, is true and what my coach, Frankie Albans, told me. There was a time when all she could do was bump the ball back and forth or pass the ball back and forth across the net. You could not spike. You couldn't attack the ball. Or, boom, you got a red card. Because it was considered unsportsmanlike conduct. Guess who advocated to change the rule? Our dear friends, our mother, wife, coach. She, along with several others, got the rule changed. Is that the rule? See how great it would still be. And she might have changed. Because it seemed Right, it was more competitive, it was exciting. Girls can do this, let us do it. Right, so then guess what? If you blocked it, boom, red card, unsportsmanlike conduct. I repeat for you, she got the rule change. Is that amazing? Then it came to, well, let's put our best player there, so they call it switch blocking. And over here, I'll block their best, boom. Red card, cheating. You tell me what she did. She got, got the rule changed. My wife as an athlete was profoundly better because she had courage. She had creative thought. And I was so inspired by that because from West Texas. She's from a small town. She was an idol of mine growing up, but I mean in a hero way, not something I worshipped or would compromise, but something I aspired to be. And then to get to coach against her? Wow, my coach taught me everything she knew, and it was amazing. But it was what Marilyn had shown him. 
It's what Marilyn has taught him. And I feel in some ways I became a protege without ever working under her. And my gift of Holy Paul has always opened doors for me, profound doors. And I'm confident because of her. I didn't know her profoundly personally, but when she saw me, she always honored me. And she would say, Oh, yes, yes, we're Davis, we Texans, Reddits. Yeah, she was always so kind. But my life is different because of her. And I know it is. I know that the gift that I walk in is because, like Einstein, she wrestled with stuff, or like Play Doh, she put it out there because that was her. So I close with this as he was speaking. My mind was going through the last match that I played and coached against her. Not played, the last match I coached against her. And Marilyn had the creative idea to put the setter on the opposite side of the court than where it had usually been. Volleyball is almost always played to the left. Uh, sorry. Yeah. No. Um, I, yeah. Sorry. It's because I was a bit of a Okay. It's always played to the right. Okay. But instead of having the setter over to what would be considered when you're looking the right side of the court, she put the setter in the four position, not the two position. Raise your hand if you have ever, ever, ever seen any setter in the left front. Anyone? Because of the error? Another innovator in its own way, they do for the second American man. An innovator. She had the courage to do it. She picked the very first word in the beginning, God, and what is the next word? Created. She used her creative forces. She wasn't afraid. She didn't care if people laughed at her or said, What are you doing? She did it. And I so admire that. You and Sean and Hunter said from the left side, but my knees were not going to lose one in the match. I was like, I've never run a defense against this. I don't know how it will work. I had a brilliant assistant coach who helped. And we wound up. Winning the match, but I didn't clear. And I learned a lot from that. And she helped me find me my courage. So I say to you, it is true. From what I know, that she is the only female to have won a national championship as a volleyball coach. Still? Still. Because in 98, mm -hmm. I became less than a 1%. Or my team went to the only day. And had we gone to the final four, I was going to be this rare, like, whoa, a woman in the final four. But she was the only one that did ever want. And still to this day, I'm not respected. And she is a treasure, a pioneer, and I'm so grateful in so many ways. So I came to honor you today, my friend, and I look forward to passing balls that you serve at me and doing my best to impress you and please you. Thank you for all that you did for us and thank you all. Thank you.
next anybody okay here we go Back then, he couldn't even coach, was still remaining as an amateur. 
My first cruise was 20 minutes. Second America is a big, long world. But after the Olympics, he wanted to play again in 72, so he couldn't even teach any athletics at his junior high because that would do away with his amateur standards. <laughs> the things that Marilyn did were truly amazing for the sport. It was her vision that put together the idea of having a national training center for the Chiefs. The women's teams did it first because she began that with the Florida of Asuna. And they set it up in Pasadena. They had, she arranged an agreement with them to, to support the players, give them apartments, and pay for the national coach. And I didn't remember that. Thank you. <laughs> Some people in the USDBA were very upset with her because she was making all the decisions that they thought since they were the national governing body, they should make the decisions. Ultimately, they did. And they took over the program, both the men and the women in the national training programs because of the idea that Marilyn had. Yeah, she was a disruptor. Sometimes you have to do the right thing for the wrong reason because that's how you make change. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's very tough at those And those two, they had a quiet voice. Many of the ladies <laughs> are amazing. Mary Steve is someone that I know. She, she was the youngest on that team. She was 18 when she played with the Olympic team. They had a big Olympic team in 68. Many times, the moment of all American, Frankie was just a special name. She, she played for club teams that I was an assistant coach on. And she she was never recognized. <laughs> but Marilyn set the bar and another level. And that's something for everyone to celebrate, especially women. You, you have to look for people that are willing to step beyond the ordinary, do something that no one's ever He was an innovator. He tried all kinds of things. I haven't seen you all since you were five. That and, and your father, first time I met him, I knew exactly what Marilyn was. He was a drag queen. He called this the drag <laughs> well, that helped for her. <laughs> I was there with, with Ray Mayer, and he was going into the Navy, and he wanted to be shaken, so he had to do about me. He had to decide that he made me shake really nice. one of my one of my own. So we all walked around the blocks together, and let the mom get for us. <laughs> so it really was really uh, Well, I, I'm proud to have been on both Proud to have been not immediately in her life, but being around people to be influenced. I was the, the first player rep to serve on the board of directors for USA Volleyball. Maryland was constantly. And the truth is, father loved <laughs> But if, if you look where things are today, so much of what she wanted to do, well, we can come to recognize whether this wants or not back then. Marvelous looking. United States 
There are more volleyball teams than any other sport in college. <coughs> it wasn't the big sport back before that. And changes look at more. The alterations in the role and everything else takes so much time. This is the only country in the world that has different rules for high school, college. USBBA and international. Everywhere else, the international rules are the rules that everybody plays. But when you have that much diversity, there's always controversy, and there's fairly ridiculous discussions about what the rules are. Man made rules are never rules. Fairly understood that you know, Anybody else? No? Okay. One thing that hasn't been mentioned is I don't think there's anybody in the country that's in as many halls of fame as she is. If you look on your on the obituary, there's a whole bunch of them. Okay. Please join with me in prayer. God of compassion, comfort us with the great power of your love as we mourn the death of Marilyn. Let our grief and confusion help us find peace in the knowledge of our loving mercy to all your children and give us light to guide us into the assurance of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer that our... No, we already did that. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with all your saints, where there is neither pain, nor sorrow, nor sighing, but life everlasting. Okay, please stand. The God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, make you complete in everything good, that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, you're all invited to follow the procession to the cemetery, where we will have the, a brief bedside service. Thank you. at home. Yeah.
Uh, at home, you know, the pulpit has a, a shelf below where I can put my stuff, and this one really doesn't. So. Oh, 